Welcome to another episode of Funky Marketing Show, Funky Marketing Podcast, however you call it. Today I have the pleasure of hosting a friend of mine. We're going to talk about an important topic, boosting B2B sales through LinkedIn and account-based marketing. And we're going to talk about simplified ABA frameworks, B2B growth list experiments, and those kind of things. And my guest is Tomasz Maciejewski, who does exactly those things. And even more, I don't know if you know about him, but if you saw the list of B2B marketers on LinkedIn, he was behind that. He's LinkedIn and ABM consultant, now organizing LinkedIn local for show events. You know, mentor, as I think we all are for startups in our countries, and also part-time digital nomad, which is also interesting. So, Tomas, welcome to the, to the show. Hello, thank you for having me in the mania and it's a privilege. I'm happy to talk with you today. Yeah, likewise. I mean, we've been going off and on about, about different things. You already recorded something, you know, for your own content together. And I think it's time that we dive deeper into some things. Great. Perfect. So tell me, did they miss something when it comes to your background and all those things that you do? Like, it seems like both of us are doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> Definitely. And yeah, it's great to experiment, but I think always great to find something that that stick that we like also, because it's also important part of my journey. As you mentioned that I started offline events this year. Also, I'm super excited about this because as during the COVID, we bought house outside the big cities in the central part of Poland, Poland, close to the nature. And I thought, okay, perfect. I have LinkedIn. I, I have skills how to how to start relationships with clients, how to close deals, so I can sit in my house and do do good money using this go arbitrage. So living in the cheaper place with great, great quality of life. But yeah, I found that I miss a lot offline meetings. I'm extrovert. I love to be on the stage. So yeah, I'm super happy that I also add this part to 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 to, to my to to, to to my life to the this year that I will conduct monthly. Yeah, I think it's experimenting and finding uh, what we like and also what works. It's it's important, and I'm happy that we live during these times that we have this opportunity because in the places we born it's like not what wouldn't be so necessary that we could make good global business now it's kind of magic that we can choose our place to to live and still and still develop on i think on the highest level because even in the biggest university i couldn't find that level of of content of the knowledge that we can exchange being in this like linkedin community yeah i, I totally agree i mean i mean i went through the same journey i mean when i moved to novi sad i like everybody that i knew it's kind of like this in novi sad people don't will never call you first they will always say, ah, I need to sketch all of the things, you know, those kind of stuff. Then I'm like, okay, there were like 40 people. I saw maybe eight of them in like four years since I moved mm -hmm. here or five, I don't know. But so I said, okay, what can I do? And I saw the opportunity to organize LinkedIn Local because I was the speaker at the first LinkedIn Local Belgrade. So I said, let's do something similar in Novi Sad. So nice. kind of went through the the similar journey when it comes to when it comes to those things and now i'm using that knowledge to kind of create another business which is you know a networking events and community around around that mm -hmm. definitely yeah i i see in poland it also that networking events is growing really well so yeah, i'm looking also for niching down to focus maybe more about the b2b marketing sales account-based marketing maybe not for events for entrepreneurs but every market is different every like maturity it's it's the intense of the events i think it's it's always good direction i even found this term one time that <laughs> work global and play local something like this because really i really like in the to be immersed i even talked today with one 
friend who is to be part of elections in our small city. And I feel, okay, I would be super excited to give you some advice and ideas. What could you do? Uh, of course, I don't want to be involved in anything politically, officially, because it's something that I don't want to waste too much of my thinking and time, but I'm super happy to support someone, someone locally. So yeah, I think that it's always to be aware what is important for us what we like and not not maybe especially this is on twitter or something on linkedin that big number that okay everything is important to employ more people to have to, to earn more money to find the balance what is important for us what 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 would work for our life quality yeah i think if you if for you and for me is offline events also part of this it's great to, to do this Yeah, yeah. I mean, we even had a conference here in one of the smaller cities called uh, Think Global, Act Local. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or or it was reverse. I, I don't remember now. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it was like a, a local conference where people, yeah, people doing global job came to, to the local event to give back to the community and share their knowledge and, and uplift everybody through that. Cool. Maybe I'll have a chance to also come to to visit to visit Warsaw and organize it so I come to visit some one of your events and you know I hope so have a good, mm -hmm. have a good time and you know do some things together that would be that would be nice it's a long Definitely. time coming my wife is asking me where we are going to the new country so mm -hmm. <laughs> nice nice, nice uh, definitely yeah so let's go let's go into the, the LinkedIn and, and ABM and, and those kind of things so so my first question is How did you get into that B2B marketing and, and ABA environment? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we can go and move straight to talking about what company do and what they can do. But I want to get your background also to mm -hmm. kind of create an intro for that. Okay. So as you mentioned at the beginning, that being digital nomad is important part of my story of my identity and it was my big dream even today i comment someone about the speaking on tedx i also was tedx speaker and this was about being digital nomad it was my very big dream it was something that i that always when i heard that it's possible to spend winter outside our cold country serbia it's a little warmer than poland but Poland is, you know, extremely cold during winter. And I have a birthday at the end of the November. So it always for me, why other kids, they have, you know, birthdays during the warm months and I have every year at the same time. So it was my big dream when I heard that it's possible to live in Thailand with for the same money like in Poland. And it's not for rich people. It's possible to earn normal money just to spend, uh, to buy a ticket and then spend few, a few months there. So it was my big dream. Yeah, I re realized it around nine years ago. First time I went for the winter to Thailand. It was crazy <laughs> story with I went almost with no money with one way ticket and everything sorted out during this during this trip. I was volunteering in different places, etc. And but it showed me that that even I became like general marketing freelancer, that even being in the wonderful place in the like paradise but you are overwhelmed because as general marketing a consultant mar freelancer doing everything trying to do seo paid ads social media you are not good with, uh, in this uh, with you and we try to do everything so you are not delivering results for the clients so it's stressful because i For, for me it's important to deliver as best uh, outcome as possible from my from my work so i started looking for some other ways how to improve this i i first i learned about this a myth about this book about productized agency so i found whoa this is something i want i want to build the process and have like mcdonald that we okay is the the line and then we are creating this big mac in the same way in, in serbia in montevideo in warsaw or in even in bangkok there are some special dishes in different in different countries but it's the the big mac i think is the similar everywhere So I started to do with this and, and I joined to one marketing agency, marketing mastermind, and they showed that you can do a business and you need to do lead generation. So they showed LinkedIn automation. It was like 2018. So it's working pretty well. 
but I found that, okay, I can book a meetings with people, but I can close because I want, I want to do the bootstrap. So I want to sell explainer videos. I didn't have my own explainer video. I sell something and then to outsource. <laughs> but I found, okay, I can have meetings with, with pretty big companies, but they smell that I don't have idea a lot about things I'm selling. So I decide, okay, if I can book a meeting, so maybe if I can deliver meetings to people that already have established credibility, they know what they are selling, maybe this is good direction. So I started with LinkedIn and I went for one conference and it was also in Warsaw. I didn't live in Warsaw at that time. And uh, I remember that I walk and I said, okay, today, if I meet someone, I will say, I help with LinkedIn. And the first person I talk with became my client. So I decided, okay, if I needed a sign, here it is. So, so I decided to focus on LinkedIn. First was pure prospecting. Later, I found that, that it's not something that I'm proud of to, you know, to use LinkedIn automation and to pretending that, oh, I like your profile, but actually I didn't. I just sent automated messages. So I started to digging deeper. I always loved content. I always loved blogging. I read Smart Passive Income by Pat Flynn and similar blogs. So I decided it was time to when I moved to Warsaw to, to post a few things. And I found, whoa, when I post something, it's much different than being this like person uh, that prospect people respect me more if they came to me because of my content and i started to 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 look for for other solutions i found uh, the book of linkedin content but i and the zinkevich and i found wow this is something different to, to to focus on content to focus on specific group of audience and i also learned about account based marketing something that i felt felt earlier that it's something that it's worth to do. I organized my conference about digital nomads and even I went for the event organized by one of my friends to talk with him to become partners. I found, okay, some sometimes it's worth to work more or, or specific relationships because that could be pillar of some of my bigger projects. So so and and also when i learned about the concept popularized by uh, russell branson for click funnels and dream 100 so it's everything is similar focus on the key clients not to spread a message and wait or maybe prospect 1000 people and waste their time when they agree to meet with you that they will treat you for the higher position no focus on the specific clients yeah on the, i started in 2019 to focus on this path and still today i'm i'm stick to this i really like the, the concept that to be the person that reached to more clients the best way to be top of their mind to to network to focus on actions value like co-creating content with with possible clients or partners yeah and the, the, based on this i also decide to to find that way to bring the best from account-based marketing to companies that are afraid of all the jargon like demand generation, ABX, ABS, ABM. So I found, okay, maybe let's simplify this because I think many com more companies can use account-based account -based marketing and many times they will put in the Google, they will see super expensive tool like 20,000 euros just for better targeting. And I found, okay, maybe let's, let's make this simpler, more accessible. Yeah, and this is my this is my yeah, it, it, it reminds me a lot of uh, I mean first of all you you brought some memories uh, nice. you know like I didn't hear about Pat Flynn I did since uh, since I left the performance and uh, and it's also a kind of story about Pat Flynn because Pat Flynn went for the first time to Europe for a conference in Lisbon and I decide I need to talk with him. So I found that he saw, he he created like 500 t-shirts for charity with the serve first uh, message. And I decided, okay, 500 t-shirts around the world. If I buy this t-shirt, he will see me. And yeah, it happened. So I was the only person in the street during the conference. And yeah, I asked him, hey, Pat, 
can we record short interview after here keynote speech even we talk before this because i was shared and even from the stage few hundred people on the on the, uh, you know sitting there and he asked me from the state hey tomas how to spell this polish the word so for me like guy you know hearing this on the podcast and some other part of the world it was something big and yeah after this uh, this conference we sit together we record short interview i'm <laughs> from my iphone just holding in my hand and it also showed me because when i walk with him many people you know that talk to him okay pat great job and i was thinking he wouldn't remember these people for sure how can he remember like tense people say okay great job pat but with me he posted story on his instagram and we we talk during the after party so that showed me that i spent like 20 dollars for buying the t-shirt but it's worth to prepare and i paid the same money for the conference ticket like the a few hundred people around me but i built the relationship with person that was superstar for me yeah it's again this like abm mindset sometimes it don't even you know we need to talk we name this abm mindset but this way of thinking yeah we don't need sometimes to spend more money we just need to think more strategic who you want to connect exactly and you said one thing i like to get get into that a little bit before we go into the you know strategic and tactical things but you know i remember one of the first episodes of this podcast when i was talking with i think with with yak from from india and we talked about account-based marketing mm -hmm. i always had this thing that i'm listening to people talk about you know you need to do account-based marketing you need to have at least 400 accounts you need to target at least 400 companies right and it basically ties you up to the tool right to target 400 accounts you need a tool but on the other hand i was looking at abm always as you want to go and enter somebody's house, right? I remember when I was younger and I was doing this kind of reading the how much electricity did you spend, right? So a lot of people have that inside their houses. So I need to find a way to enter the house. Sometimes it's even in the, the second room or whatever it is. They need to move the, the closet, you know, how it is here in the Balkans. But, you know, and your tolls need to happen early morning so sometimes even before eight and if i come to there first there's you know i need to enter the yard meaning through the fence over it or whatever it is or because they don't open it yet then maybe there's a dog then there's a person that you need to go through to to enter the the house and i that's all the thing you need to do to, to sell to somebody right and mm -hmm. On the other hand, if they know, so it's happening like on the first days of the month. And if they know me, because I've been there a couple of times already, you know, ringing the bell, they know exactly the time when I'm coming, those kind of things. Then, and, and if I'm kind, and if I talk with them, if I help them, you know, clarifying something, they will basically, you know, open the gate at least the evening before that. They will greet me when I, when I come. Sometimes they offer the, the drink, whatever it is, and they will let me inside the house. And I look at account-based marketing as these small things that basically allows you, somebody welcomes you inside their house. It's not like, you know, you need to go over the fence, escape the dog, whatever it is that you are doing, right? So I, I always, as you said, uh, that's why I'm using these kind of examples. I always like to simplify things to the people because like there are a lot of them that will come and then they will bring you know like sheets and graphics and whatever it is just so it looks bigger right because they're selling mm -hmm. to maybe to bigger accounts and those kind of things and i figure out you know when you come to the conference or you talk with a client there will be chris walker there will be andre zinkiewicz that mm -hmm. you mentioned our friend and a lot of other guys who bring you know heavy sheets heavy data, whatever it is. And I, we need to find a way to be different, right? So people can understand us uh, in, a, in a different way. And, and that's why I want to, let, to say to everybody listening. So make sure that your audience understand exactly 
what you are saying. So let's dive let's dive deeper into into the frameworks that you develop and things that you tried. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a simplified approach. I called it ABM Sprint <clears throat> to show this that it doesn't need to be so big at the beginning. It should be like pilot program because it's also mindset change for for many for many sales, especially sales representatives. It's like outside the the, the current thinking that they need to travel to the client, meet at their place, get to, to build the relationship that way. And when we establish, for example, something around content co-creation, that for example, we are launching specific podcast, it should be like small, it should be ready to pivot because also in different industry, maybe sometimes it will be hard to, to invite people to, to be podcast guests. So we need to look for something else, maybe that could be like specific events breakfast uh, for the industry something that we have reason to connect with potential clients and the call to action wouldn't be to meet with our sales representative because for them it's like a, a, agree well, for the meeting it's something okay i will agree i will spend time they will follow up me endless so maybe it's it could be the higher barrier to to accept for the meeting directly especially when someone ask for our our pain challenges that we don't know and we are from the bigger company and it's not something that we are sharing as super openly with with everyone so that in abm sprint i always advise to create this small small team with me with one marketer and with one specific person some sometimes a tech person also would be necessary if it is like higher complicated and we want to be sure that it's everything aligned with with the expertise from the company sometimes this person wouldn't be the host of the podcast or the other way that we want to co-create with 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 clients so the the host will be ceo of the of the company it's like more common when we have like 30 40 people i think i i work many times with, with th th this size and next we want to create this account list companies that we want to target i advise around 20 at the beginning to really focus on them yeah that, that's why i wanted to, to to ask you how how many do you do you go for mm -hmm. but that, does it is it related to the kind of strategy that you are going for like is it a podcast it can be the research it can be true, true. i don't know something else is it related to that or it's not yes yes definitely because you know when we for example want to to, to organize like offline meetings so 20 could be too much and but we can organize a few of these meetings because it's always about the analyzing and to find that trigger that it's not obvious because for many many times for companies okay that company could be our client <laughs> because we want them as our client but sometimes we don't know if these companies there's have this need so i always advise to focus first about our current client base about less uh, about less clients we signed about the reason why why we they decide to work with us also that many times i advise okay let's do some maybe like research our current base uh, if they have big client base and maybe use it as this research also to reactivate them to to and also i i look also for the excuse for example okay we're creating new content something like this content plan we want to create something specific for you let's share what you need and this is at, that could be on one hand it could be good data and the direction for us about client selection for expansion maybe in this industry maybe we are super good in some industry and sometimes companies didn't even know they're like 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 very they have good solution for specific problem for specific solution in maybe specific area and that could be our uh, and that way we can find like good good target to not like randomly pick 20 companies okay let's look for the low-hanging fruits 
where we can when we can have the results the, um, in the quickest way because yes it's important for everyone it's important for me to have happy client uh, because to 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 show the results and it's important also for company if they want to follow this abm path it's important that the sales person that is involved in this pilot program they will be example of the success because it's it's like not comfortable it's <laughs> to have something new to have something outside the, the the current work process yeah in this pilot program we want to we want to focus on companies that we can uh, have better and quicker chance for some uh, wins and that way it should uh, be like better motivation for whole company and it should be the first sprint so we choosing the accounts then choosing the way how we want to interact with them and then to conduct this so for example to prepare together for the podcast to to help sort out that technical things on the minimum valuable way so also as we talked before to to help them not be trapped in the perfectionism it's, it's hard and of course in bigger companies because many times marketing it's like with this b2c background they want to justify they you know in a part of the process so okay for example the face was not in the good light or something and guys okay let's start with something simpler with something that we want to test this to to find how people react if they are ready to to, to join podcast if we, in this industry it's possible to the specific position to interview because of course in high enterprises like communication the policies the procedures okay if we can uh, if we can negotiate and to invite people or it's not and we need to invite in some other way and then 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 to conduct this project and to work on on regular basis to to talk about some problems about to to also motivate to warm the accounts because to maybe to comment their content and any other way to also not like jump out of nowhere okay join to my podcast okay let's maybe work to make our name more similar to them to 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 to, to create this impression that okay i i know this guy from someone <laughs> from somewhere yeah so yeah, maybe yeah. It, it's worth to to talk with with him and uh, yeah, my my target maybe, about uh, four months. just just a, a little nuance there do you have like specific industry where you saw that that this is working mm -hmm. you know when we are already talking about the number of accounts and those kind of things Okay, okay, yeah, it's mostly B2B services in general, in a more specific way uh, around IT, but yeah, also I found like like others dedicated to like well-being of the of the employees, etc. So it's always finding the specific angle, but yeah, I like also that IT in dedicated to specific industries like for example one podcast it was for environment uh, niche this was it companies so it was pretty pretty nice idea to build a position in the european market other for example it's like it's um, often it's great when it's like super specific service and advanced the because it's opened this opportunity to build this connection and then open to explain something that it's hard to explain like on the prospecting message because many time examples courses showing okay how can i make you 50 percent more revenue but sometimes it's like more nuanced and that like media brand when we're creating something it's the, our opportunity to start the conversation where it's like more complicated so yeah also like uh, i have examples from the companies selling some super specific solution helping to for beauty for example corporation around the world so it's like i, I like specific b2b services sometimes it's physical products but mostly tomorrow i have like 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 be important works for a production company but yeah most it's it's b2b services and something that it re really can nail down the specific niche they don't they don't want to 
create podcasts that they were talking to drastic people and they will yeah we will have big reach and based on this we will get clients i don't know our goal is to have little viewership but our goal is is to be really known and to own the niche with our show or some other yeah. activity yeah, yeah, yeah let's let me take you a, a little bit back when we're talking about specific companies and those kind of things do you have like when you start working with them do you do organize for example check out if if they have the basics sorted out right because mm -hmm. the way the way i look at those kind of like simple ABM tactics, let, let's call them simple. You know, they need to have the comprehensive understanding of the problem that they are solving mm -hmm. and specific solution. Like USP needs to be really sorted out mm -hmm. uh, you know, for that to work. Because like through those things, basically we are trying to nail like 20% of the market. And if we do that, we take over the, the rest of it because those people will start talking about it, and and they will basically have you know the, the way the way I always always see it, you know, not knowing who you are, it will become the less of a problem comparing to the to the problem that they are solving, mm -hmm. right? So it takes over, and then if you have like at least one successful story from that niche then you know you're basically ready to go do you check if they have those things and if not do you maybe do a workshop or something like that yes yes i i always ask one of my first question do you have clients that you want to duplicate if it is possible so okay this clients we love that's, that's, okay. a, that's a great question yeah <laughs> this is like like intro question yeah on one hand it's not my goal to you know in a first sprint to sort out everything because also I give this uh, room for using this uh, to sort out things, to really to have this goal that, okay, we are not sure about this, this, okay, we want to talk with market more, we want to establish connection, okay, so let's use maybe this sprint also for this. And yeah, I spent uh, like a few first weeks to, to really understand different perspectives. I try to, when it's possible, to do as many one-on-one -on -one calls also to find some different perspective of the company because, like, uh, I found that is the worst. I, I started with this to only do, like, team meetings, but I found, okay, it's important also to have different perspectives. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's, like, more, more than this, like, sprint, but I use it also, like, as, as like in the, like at the funnel that we start with the ABM sprint, I want to be a known for this, not like okay, I'm the general marketing and sales consultant. Okay, I want to be known for this, and then to continue to continue with people that okay, after ABM sprint we can okay, we can fix this, we can fix this, we can fix this, but we know each other, we trust ourselves more we see that okay we have that like culture match and it's great i think it's the time because because for me it was like overwhelming that to audit everything at the beginning and and you know to expect people to maintain this level of excitement because it's like excitement at the beginning of the project so i try to like minimum viable audit okay to 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 uh, sort out things that it's most important to to have the successful first campaign and then based on this that we have that we see some results okay let's continue let's 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 use it to create something long term it's more on the pillars of the marketing and sales of the company yeah basically basically that that takes us to, to one of the most important thing when you do marketing is how fast can you ship things mm -hmm. right because if you don't do it you know, basically everybody starts to look around. They started mm -hmm. to look how much does it cost, you know, true, those true. kind of things because you don't bring anything. I don't have time. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't have time for the meetings. Yeah, executive started. Oh, no, no, I'm busy. So, yeah, it's it's important because many people, I think, you know, they focus on the, like, technical and strategical thing. But and that human part, it's also super important. Yeah, for me, I found for my first workshops that it's like more important and i focus more how to how to buy people how to how to establish connection with them 
and that they will like me and then they will be more open what I'm offering them because just showing, okay, here you need to eat clean, here you need to post every day on LinkedIn, here you need to exercise. We all knew this, but you to change, it's super hard. Yeah, it's also important for this. And this is the way I'm still you know, improving the process also to keep in mind that excitement also lowering <laughs> down, especially in B2B when it's not something that, okay, launching campaign and we see sales next day here. Okay. It's like long-term and we really need to maintain this fire <laughs> to, 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 to change and yeah, to continue true, the program. True. So basically two questions. First one is, okay. So you have somebody on the podcast, what's the process after that? And also, how do you choose the like first 10 people that you want to interview mm -hmm. for that? And then we'll move into what's happening when you don't have like the subject matter expert or somebody who's good on, on mm -hmm. camera and those kind of things. What are some other options that we can use for those sprints? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So for the sales process, I always say uh, we need just to be open. We just need to... And this is the question also I asked uh, when I did my B2B growth trends in the end of the last year, different uh, agents, podcast agencies, ABM consultants, every time it was like, when you work to create these relationships, it shouldn't be like too pushy later. It's something that, okay, we do this thing. If you need any help, let's jump on the call. Let's, let, let's continue with this. So I always, I, for this reason, I, I advise this, this print framework that I don't mention this framework one time. We can meet after the recording and ask, okay, what was the vibe with this? Okay, what we can do? Do you think that they have need or not? Okay, how can we for how can we spot if this challenge or problem that we have solution for exists in this company and i think it's it's, it's the best and of course it's not like easy at the beginning to find the roi directly but i think in the matter of time we can see this that okay it was impossible to have any meeting with this company and up but after the podcast we have some relationship we can reach to them Maybe, maybe sometimes it's not possible. Of course, people are different and every situation is different. Sometimes you can do super nice, uh, super nice interview and someone will feel super offended that, that we ask about their problems or something. But in general, if we have good one hour conversation, for, for, for example, they will probably much more open. This is this magic moment after we stop the recording that, that a few minutes of talking it's something that it's hard to achieve any other way and definitely not possible when we talk during the conference break and we drink coffee and it's we wouldn't have this this deepness of the connection so i don't have like <laughs> super no proven sales process after the recording i believe that people that know the industry they're selling they will have better position to continue what worked for them if they talk with client, for example, that came to them from the referral or or any other other uh, direction or source. And for the test, ten guests, I I try to start with people that 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 they know that it's important. I even ask at least three first guests to to be people from their network. I hope that that past clients, someone also with big logos like, okay, if you want to reach with global brands, it's great when we have also a first episode with people we already know with, from the companies that are also similar size, but even solo episode, I think it, it will be great uh, because at least someone maybe wouldn't accept the invitation, but they will check for many people that they will the first invitation to being podcast guests in their life they will be more interested and even even i see that i launched the linkedin local uh, warsaw event and because of this event even happened yet uh, 
January was my best month since like three years because for many people it was like, okay, who is the organizer, the LinkedIn, LinkedIn local or so, even before the event and they checked my profile. Okay, I need this guy. Let's let's connect with him. So the same we can use with the podcast with optimized profile, etc. They're inviting someone, they're checking, okay, I will check the few episodes and they will check your content, one hour podcast solo, for example, that you are teaching your framework, uh, describing case studies. And that could be also the like step forward with these clients, even they're not 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 uh, ready to be the guests. So yeah, starting with the people that we have flow already, uh, I think it's necessary. And if we want to build the podcast in the niche, we should know someone because starting from the ground zero, not knowing everyone, inviting guests to the episode number one could be harder. I'm not sure if not. I'm not sure it's 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 impossible. I think we will finally find someone because people in general are pretty open to be podcast guests. But yeah, I I recommend to start to people we know as and also to be more comfortable with the process with the flow because uh, uh, every time something could break and it's great to be prepared for this. Yeah, it's. Um... I always say like first 10 guests are, is the, the hardest thing to find, especially having in mind that you didn't publish an episode yet, mm -hmm. right? You don't have what to, to show them, you know, mm -hmm. how it goes. That's why it's, it's okay if you can get like at least one episode on your own to kind of like intro or whatever it is to kind of break it down. And I, and I usually say, you know, on, if you do a thing like podcast, you don't want to have people who you are trying to sell right away. You want to have like possibly bigger accounts that you want to create a relationship with and to go through that. And I just want to add what, what do we do after we finish recording the podcast? Usually we involve them in, in distribution as well. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, through marketing and people and, and salespeople, we try to connect with people from the company that, you, that affects the decision-making process on one hand. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you know, we, dis we try to, to boost the, the guest's personal brand through our company pages, mm -hmm. right? And that's the way we create a relationship. We share them like short clips that they can share. But also like during the recording, we like to ask, uh, and, and you mentioned that like specific things that will clear us up some of the things that we don't know, right? How is decision-making process going? Where do they go to get educated, to sell? You know, not always... You are possible. It is possible to ask those kind of things, but you try mm -hmm. to to you know to have them you know maybe not obviously and direct, but through an indirect question to find out to find out those things. But tell me, you know, there are a lot of especially IT companies, tech companies that have founders who are uh, you know introverts, who are maybe not good on camera, who don't have anybody besides them in the company that, that can act as subject matter expert. That's always like the, the thing that can make or break the, the ABM strategy because if they have anybody else besides them, like the CMO or whoever it is, like you need to make sure that that person stays in the company for a long time, mm -hmm. right? So that's something that's always uh, a little bit tricky. So what are other things that you recommend them when they cannot do a podcast, right? You, you created a list for the growth. Mm -hmm. There are some other things like the research, those kind of things. What, what do you recommend besides that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, to add for the last, to the past question that also, I, I recommend also to create like the media kit for the guests. It was opportunity to, to follow up, but always I won't add what we connect also to do this question to also make this booking process for the podcast as professional, as automated as possible to show this because I, I found that, um, that uh, as I mentioned, I organized conference for digital nomads in Poland. It was uh, last was in 2018, so six years ago, and still people coming back for me from a different service. So they remember good you know good experience on my other service from other niche but still there are you know <laughs> associated me with good quality so i i always recommend to make this process around the podcast 
to build this impression, okay, this company is organized and they will deliver. Okay, so for the other formats, as you mentioned, list. I, I made this list of the 100 people to follow. It was also something that put me on the map because before this, I was posting something and it was mostly around this full funnel community. I was speaker, etc. But this put me on the map and yeah, we, uh, many people wanted to talk with me just to recognize who is this guy who made this. Also, idea behind that I, I had this process that first I put the list day after I write to people uh, using emails that, hey, you are on the list that went viral on LinkedIn and, whoa, I'm on the viral, what's going on? And yeah, many people, okay, who are you that you are made this, made this? And many networking calls, yeah, we can also build something around this and this is this like ego marketing. It's also good first step that people will, will be interested who you are that you have good profile, that it's not about, I have 20 years experience and I'm super professional, but pointing that, okay, if you have problem, like on my profile, if you have problem that you have limited target market and you see that you or should spam these people with uh, prospecting and automation, or you should be personal brand and taking selfies every day and talking about the stories that you gave money on the street to someone and both of these approaches you feel, no, it wouldn't work because I have one client or possible clients around the world because I'm selling something advanced and you are, it's not for me. So, okay, here's ABN Sprint. So the, your LinkedIn profile should answer for these challenges that your target market has. So the list is possible Another maybe to make like interviews in written format to, to, to maybe to, to block, it could still work. Maybe sometimes even in like written format and just use it on LinkedIn. I wanted with at the end of the year, as you mentioned, that we recorded interview for, for my format. I make this, I wanted to test this something smaller. That is like 10 minutes interviews without like podcast branding, without all the tech. I created like automation that, okay, choose the date when you are ready, here are possible questions. And we are doing this with, uh, using Google Meet. So it was possible for me to record three interviews per day. So, and uh, and still I, I, man, I created great, great relationships only with this short, shorter format. Another way, of course, is like using this online. But we could also, for example, use it for the offline events. Like tomorrow, I'm I'm conducting workshop in the production company, that in the one of the biggest companies near my near my home. Yeah, I I like when I walk to the shop, I see their big banner, and I think, okay, they should be my clients. So I organize LinkedIn local in my small city in Konin for seventy thousand people, and I invite to be a speaker marketing manager for this company. So they came to the event. I I showed my presentation that hey, I'm doing LinkedIn and helping globally. I have clients from different countries, and they oh okay, <laughs> so they they were like forced to see my presentation because they're also speaker during the event and they became my clients. So we also think about this offline activities. I did an interview with one of my friends who organized a dinner for CTOs in Texas, in Austin. So similar like in the podcast, they invite five, five people they know and five people they don't know. They prepared experience, gifts, with one company, we organized like dedicated breakfast for HR because also that many HR managers like women that are not so extrovert and they're okay. It will be hard to get them to the podcast. So maybe let's organize in different cities and also with the dedicated USP for different breakfasts. No, let's meet and it will be nice and it will be tasty coffee. No, let's make for let's focus on the problems. Uh, age gap, for example. Okay, now Poland. It's we have uh, many Ukrainian people came here, but I hope that a uh, war will end and they will come back to home. And that also gap in the market because they uh, all the people work. There's nobody on the streets homeless. Everyone has homes and working and and has help from the from from the country. So maybe they will need more people. So they maybe they need to prepare for the challenge. Maybe to organize breakfast about this. So we are also focusing about USP of 
all activities and there are like no silver bullet bullet we need to think also about this we're inviting to the podcast not just to talk what will be for them now i'm starting the podcast for people managing sales and b2b marketing and i think okay it's hard to attract good talents maybe if you will be in the podcast and you showed your mindset how the company works the process etc for me it's great because i i want to have this knowledge from different companies of course i want to establish connection and for them employer branding for example that could be the the value for them and yeah every time we need to focus on the value for people and then to find the way how to invite them to something that it's not sales call something that it's different something that gives us opportunity to know them better to establish connection and to be for them top of the mind like for even people joining my conference six years ago i'm top of the mind in all the things around linkedin yeah that's uh, i mean i hope everybody listening will will get away with with this with this one thing you know it's not science fiction Right, you can focus on doing simply like few things to get you to the next goal. Right, mm -hmm. you don't always need to think. You know, companies say, "Okay, everybody says we need to do this marketing." Right, what it is? Mm -hmm. Who should we call? Like then, how do we set up ourselves for growth? It seems to be like, oh, you know, like we need to have like robust systems and those kind of things. But sometimes you just need to start. We have a small target group see okay let's see if we can get this like at least three out of these 20 companies to work with us and start with that then you go from that to the next one and to the next one i think that's extremely important especially today when we go to linkedin and we see like tons of different stuff some of this is great some of this doesn't make sense at all but mm -hmm. you know like company founders ceos they don't know the difference Right. And, and from that example, I think it's, it's extremely important to talk about these things and show how we actually are doing, doing them. Tell me for the end two things, where can people find more information about you? And the second thing is what's next for this year, for the next couple of months or however do you, do you look at it? Okay. So yeah, for the English speaker or the English speaking word. Check the, the website ABM Sprint when I'm showing this, this 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 framework. If you if you want to connect, feel free. I decided this year to post more in Polish, so please please don't be scared. I'm still working with the with the global clients, but as I mentioned, for me, big goal is to create community here. My big goal is to to to, to organize events. My long term goal. I want to organize a big conference in Poland. This is something that I found. I want this goal and not, I'm not sure if this will happen this year or next year. I'm before my first offline event, but yeah, I'm close to the sold out the 100 people uh, room. So yeah, it's something nice. that is super promising. Yeah, this is like, I want to come back to offline, offline events, but yeah. ABM Sprint, and you can see, of course, me on LinkedIn. I still get likes from my English-speaking friends, so I hope some of them translate my posts and still like content. Not just because they like me, but if this for this uh, this, this this reason, also I'm I'm super happy. So I think this is the two most important sources. I have this B2B growth letter .com, but yeah, as I focus more on Polish uh, market, it's like more occasional. I I send something, but still you are welcome to join this list because definitely sometimes I will send this in, in, in English, some current results of experiments, faults, etc. Yeah, sounds sounds good. I mean, I, I even checked the, the last reports, I think, about the LinkedIn algorithm and those kind of things. And it says that you know, if you write in local, you maybe even get better reach. When it comes mm -hmm. to when it comes to that. Definitely. And I mean LinkedIn translation works nicely i've seen that on my mm -hmm. post definitely because mm -hmm. when i when i write something in serbian like but i have people commenting you know even though i know that they don't understand it so mm -hmm. uh, i think only on linkedin that's that's not a that's not a problem guys if you find this interesting what we're talking about check out thomas linkedin profile uh, check out what he does and reach out you know i always recommend you go back to the beginning listen to everything stop pause write things down 
when you think that, that you need to, to find out more and then reach out to him. He's a nice guy. He'll respond and he'll try to help you if, if he can. And so Thomas, again, thanks you very much for spending uh, almost an hour here with me talking about things, sharing insights. Guys, for all of you, as I always say at the end, keep it funky and uh, see you in some of the next episodes. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks.